What's up guys, my name is Calvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new, if you could please hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell icon and turn on post notifications, that way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Warrior Boodles. I'm just going to give general information as well as show you how to take care of these little ferocious beetles. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So for those of you who do not know, this is a warrior beetle. Now warrior beetles are within the ground beetle family known as Carabidae, and they are in the genus Passimachus. Now within this genus, there are a total of 32 species. All of them can be found throughout the United States. And there's also one occurring species that can be found in Canada. Now, like I said, this is a species of ground beetle. Ground beetles typically have characteristics of a flat, uh, kind of like robust, low profile body. And that helps them to be able to maneuver on terrain on the ground uh, they can squeeze and fit through uh, tight objects they can burrow through the soil sift through dirt and they kind of all have ground beetles for the most part have this type of body design warrior beetles are as you might be able to tell very tanky they're like little mini tanks very smooth and stealthy So really quickly, I just wanted to share with you guys some stickers that I have for sale on my website. All of these are of various animals that I drew on paper, and then I converted those drawings into stickers. Just to give you an idea of what they look like up close, all of these stickers are extremely durable, they're long lasting, and they're also waterproof as well. This is of a Southern Black Widow that I drew. And as you can see, these are all legit hand drawings that I've made using those markers right there. So if any of you would like to support my small business, you can head on over to kelvinwiley.net. Again, that is kelvinwiley.net. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for supporting my website, but also supporting this channel as well. And now, back to the video. Now, if you're like me, who likes to keep a lot of predatory arthropods such as mantises, scorpions, tarantulas, giant centipedes, uh, giant water bugs, etc., etc., warrior beetles honestly are one of the most underrated predatory arthropods that are out there. They are absolute killing machines. If you've never seen them in action, I highly, highly recommend getting um, and caring for a warrior beetle. Trust me, you will not be disappointed whatsoever. They're very interesting, uh, very hardy beetles that, I mean, you can't go wrong with them. The care for them is extremely easy, and I will get to that very soon on how to take care of them. I am also going to do a feeding as well, so stay tuned for that. But, um, yeah, the very underrated, very underrated beetles. So here's a close-up of the mandibles of a warrior beetle. As you can see, they are extremely large and sharp. They use their large mandibles to grab and basically eviscerate prey. They will just and they will just cut their prey open <laughs> and cut it and cut it into little pieces for them to feed on and to consume and if you're wondering what the bite is like from a warrior beetle luckily for us humans it is not that bad as I will now demonstrate by sticking my index finger within the mandibles of the warrior beetle and let's see and as you can see Warrior Beetle has gripped onto my finger and it's giving a pinch. But nothing that is going to penetrate the skin. It's just very, uh, just a tight grip, that's all. Right, let me take him off of me now. Yeah, I don't think he wants to let go. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. You can see the uh, indentation that it has left on the 
point of my finger. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to make a suitable enclosure for one. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with an enclosure. Typically, uh, you can use a plastic or glass enclosure. Just make sure that it is well ventilated, as you can see. Any type of small enclosure will do. You don't have to use something huge because they do not require that whatsoever. Something like this is completely doable and fine. So we're gonna start off with a substrate as the base for our enclosure. You could use peat moss, you could use coconut fiber, it does not really matter. You wanna give a few inches of substrate though because warrior beetles do love to burrow themselves. So you're gonna to wanna to give them at least three to four inches of substrate for them to be able to bury. All right, next, you're gonna to wanna to provide dampness in the enclosure. And by doing that, you're just going to spray their enclosure lightly with water. You can use that with a spray bottle or a mister, does not matter. But using some form of device, <laughs> whatever you wanna call it, to provide water in the enclosure. Adding water to the enclosure just adds for the substrate to be more suitable for them to be able to bury themselves in, as well as provide moisture so that they don't dry out. The substrate shouldn't be sopping with water. It should just be damp, but not drenched. A good way to find out if it's drenched or not is to squeeze the substrate. If any water comes out, then you have way too much water. Just make sure it's moist, just not drowned with water. Next, we can add some sphagnum moss. Now this is optional, you don't have to have sphagnum moss whatsoever, but it just provides some hiding for your beetle, as well as retain moisture and humidity within the enclosure as well. So optional, but not necessarily vital for the enclosure for your warrior beetle to thrive in. This next thing is optional as well, but you can also add some leaves to the enclosure as well. Just to add some hiding for your beetle. All right, just like that. And now you can also add a small water dish in the corner of the enclosure. This just gives the warrior beetle a chance to drink some water. This is just a uh, bottle cap that I have. You can use whatever. Just make sure it's not too deep so that the water beetle, or water beetle, so that the warrior beetle um, doesn't drown. So something shallow like a bottle cap will be fine. Lastly, we are going to add our beetle to its new enclosure. All right, so now we're gonna feed our friend. I just want you guys to witness the predatory response for these beetles. It's absolutely insane. These beetles, oh my gosh. Like I was saying, if you appreciate mantises and, you know, tarantulas, scorpions, giant centipedes, and you will definitely have a high appreciation for keeping warrior beetles. Just biting its face. I mean, they just don't stop. They are relentless when it comes to taking down their prey.
When it comes to feeding your warrior beetle, you could feed them about once a week. If they don't eat within that one week period, that is okay. They will eat when they are hungry. Um, so you can try within you know, the next couple of days. Just keep trying to feed them until they finally accept food. Feed them anything, honestly. Anything that they can overpower. Typically cockroaches, crickets, mealworms, um, tomato hornworms, you know, whatever you have. Uh, they are not picky eaters whatsoever. Feed them food that is usually in proportion to their body size. Um, you know, they can obviously feed on things that are much smaller, but um, as you can see, this cockroach nymph that I gave it was pretty, you know, pretty hefty, you know, for cockroach nymph, you know, in comparison to its body. Uh, but as you can see, it had no problem overpowering and taking it down. So they will pretty much kill and eat anything that they can overpower. Uh, they know their limits. If something is way too big, they will give up and stop trying. So just give them something that you know they will be able to take down, such as a cockroach. Usually there's going to be bits and pieces of prey remaining. Um, I'm sure after this warrior beetle finally finishes killing this cockroach um, and consuming it, there's going to be bits and pieces of the loach, roach, <laughs> what? The roach left behind. Um, just make sure you remove any bits and pieces of prey because that may cause mold if it just sits in there. So you don't want that to develop in your enclosure. But other than that, that is pretty much going to wrap up this video. So I'm just gonna do my outro. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video as much as I did. I had a really fun time building that enclosure and also being able to share with you guys the predatory response of the warrior beetle. If you haven't done so, if you could please leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Also hit that bell icon to turn on post notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Kelvin Wiley and also follow my TikTok at Kelvin underscore Wiley. Check out my website, KelvinWiley.net and I will see you guys in the next video.